Welcome to the GP Lama YouTube channel and in this video a relatively quick overview of the Magine P505 spider based power meter. A power meter that I've been running on road, gravel and indoors for the last 10 months and I've just wrapped up my final testing of the latest firmware which will be released this week by Magine. Now not a new power meter, this was released back in September 2021, I'll pull up the technical specifications right here. It's a spider based power meter with multiple configurations or compatibilities. Now on the chain set side of things, it's compatible with the SRAM 8 bolt crank, the SRAM 3 bolt crank, and two of the rotor modular crank sets, those being the Eldu and the Vegast. And the P505 is also compatible with Machine's new QED crank set, their own dub compatible chain set. With the number of spiders available, there's different chainring compatibility options available as well. So forearm chainring, five-arm chainring, oval chainring, and also the 107 BCD SRAM axis chainrings. On the wireless side of things, this unit supports AMP Plus and Bluetooth. Over AMP Plus, you'll get power cadence, balance, and pedal smoothness. Power accuracy is plus or minus 1.5% claimed. Power range between 0 and 2,500 watts. Cadence is between 20 and 250 RPM. Something I can't test. I can't spin that fast. Uh, no magnet is required for this. So inbuilt accelerometers for that. Calibration wise, you'll do a manual zero on this unit or you can do a back pedal to zero the unit when you're riding. Active temperature compensation isn't listed in any of the technical manuals, but I haven't seen this unit drift when using it in hot to cold, cold to hot, etc. So they may be doing something under the hood there. Has an internal battery, USB rechargeable, you'll get up to 200 hours they claim. Waterproof rating is IPX7. Activation system management firmware updates are done via the Machine app and you can do power scaling of plus or minus 10%. They list an official weight of 110 grams for the 1078 Spider on my own scales. That comes in at 100 grams, and the 1108 Spider comes in at 120 grams. The P505 comes with a two year warranty and a manufacturer suggested retail price of US 349. Some quick notes on my ride experience before digging down into the data. Installation was straightforward on the compatible crank sets that I had. I saw no drift during rides of up to three hours in the power data. There was no phase shifting or offset shifting after hard sprints or even when I did zero the meter halfway through a ride. So reliability and stability of the numbers were really, really good. Cadence is something they've improved a lot over the last 10 months initially. Pretty jagged, but after a number of firmware revisions, things are really, really smooth and looking good. And in short, the numbers are in line with the Quark D0 and the Power to Max Spiders when put up against the Asioma Duos. Now for a deeper dive into this data at my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer Tool, where we can compare multiple power meter recordings as an overlay and see how they stack up. The three data sets I'll go through get increasingly more difficult for the meter to give us good numbers. I do a Llama lab test, we go out in the road, and then on the gravel bike. Starting off here with the standard Llama lab test, the Elite Doretto XR as the baseline, Asioma Duos up against the Machine P505. Okay, into the 200 and 250 watt steady state. This was a Llama lab test short. I'd done numerous Llama lab tests long, but let's keep things simple and straightforward by showing you this data here. 223, 225, 226. Uh, very, very close, all looking good, and unsmooth data, so there is a bit of variation up and down, but you can see those tracking very, very well, all together, those three power sources. Into the short, hard power sprint, the Doretto XR kind of misses the peak a little bit there, but the two power meters on the bike, we're looking at 1193 from the Fivero, 1205 from the Machine, that's looking good for the peak power, and riding along after that, nothing much changed. So that's all looking good. Into the overs and unders, 218, 220, 221.86, all looking very, very good, and within spec there, no separation, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, back to the steady states to see if there's any phase shifting or drifting after that sprint. So 200 and 250, so 222, 224, 224, everything looking really good there. Short acceleration into a, another peak power test. Again, short acceleration, all looking good. No major separation. Some power meters or smart trainers will see 60, 70, 80, 100 watts, maybe even 200 watts on a very bad day. That's all looking good through there. Into the sprint, looking a little jagged, just the timing, I guess, with these power meters being one second recording. So what are we seeing there? The ASIOM is a one second off. I could probably face shift that back and the peaks aren't too far off. So just a recording difference there. But again, overall, looking pretty good for the Llama lab test. Left right power analysis from that. Now I never really trust true left right from a spider based power meter. They're always a bit of a guesstimate. So let's have a look at how it goes for the left right on the steady state. 
Uh, the elite derivative of XR does have some data there. I don't know how that's trying to estimate my left, right, but let's ignore that one for now. Asioma duos, which I'd probably call the source of truth for true left, right, given there are two independent sensors. 112, 113, the left, right on the machine, kind of as I expect. I never really get good data from a spider-based power meter with a single measurement source trying to split that left, right. So 120, 105. So balance with the asiomas, not so much on the machine, but stay tuned, I've got a little update on this later on in the video. Cadence-wise, from the work indoors, the Elite Doretto having kittens through here as I'm backing off the pedals and it's trying to estimate where my cadence is taking place from the power curve. It's not what we're looking at though, we're looking at the P505 for the steady state. Uh, and when things are ticking along, everything works well. So 94, 94, 94, not a problem at all there. Again, not drifting, no errors. I'll pull up this section through here. Again, the Elite Doretto X are trying to estimate my cadence from the pedal stroke. That's the only problematic thing through here. But the averages are fine, 88.7, 89.8, 89.9. So cadence-wise, on the machine P505, which is what I'm looking at today, is looking good. The mean max power graph from that is looking pretty clean. And the overall stats are looking pretty good with not a lot of stop start indoors. 178, 179, 180, all within a watt or two. Weighted power or normalized power, 220, 222, 224. And the max powers, the peak powers, not too far off, especially looking at those Asioma Duos and the Machine P505. Onto the road test, just the other day, with a nice long coffee stop in the middle. And this is a theme you'll see on this set and the next as well. Uh, Asioma Duos up against the Machine P505 with the latest firmware and diving into this section here, which does have a lot of stop start. 197, 198, all looking pretty good. Again, unsmooth, pretty rough, but no major separations, no major spikes, all looking good, just riding along. One kick sprint into town, which I got a bit of a lead out for. And again, just phase shifted uh, due to the recording, but peak power is looking pretty good from there. Uh, no need to analyze the coffee stop. The coffee was good. And just riding home into a brutal headwind, I must say. And it was 221, 222. Again, as you can see there, no major separations, no drift. 221, 222. Uh, look, what can I say other than happy days with the data, both indoors and out. Onto the gravel, the final uh, frontier, I guess. Asioma Duos converted over with a hack to the SPD pedals up against the Magine P505. Now this was a different meter, but still based on the same technology. And again, all looking pretty good outdoors. Uh, gravel's always a difficult one, given the vibrations and things coming through. Uh, 172, 173 is a drop out there from the Faveros. But other than that, just a quick eye over all this. One for one, looking really, really good up against the Asiomas. Again, the coffee stop there, and the coffee was good. And the ride home with a few stop starts. Grab this section through here. 149, 150, definitely within spec of each other. And jumping into this little kick sprint here. Now the wake up time is a little bit different through here. So the overall numbers, 237, 246, but the peak power is pretty damn close. The mean max power graph, comparing the two meters for that gravel ride, is very, very clean. And the overall stats, Asioma, the hacked version of the Asioma, is up against the machine. Weighted power, 186, 188, max powers within 5 watts. So I really couldn't ask for much more than that. So in summary, there's some good, reliable numbers coming from the P505 power meters with no major spikes or drift in offset after hard sprints. It was stable and reliable. Reliable enough for me to diagnose a problem with some power meter pedals a few weeks back too. That's one of the questions that I ask of a power meter when reviewing. Can I use it to compare others too? The answer is yes, it's a tick. This one gets a tick for that. Uh, battery life, that was good. By the time I needed to recharge, I'd forgotten where I put the charger, which means I got a good few weeks, if not a few months out of each charge. So should you choose this power meter for your bike? Well, as always, it's entirely up to you, but if you have a compatible chain set where you can switch spines pretty quickly and you can get a good deal on one of these, you'll end up with a pretty good power solution for your bike. So coming up, Magin tell me there is another firmware coming out that will improve the left-right balance estimation, and they are sending over one of their QED crank sets with the P505 on it for me to test that new firmware with. So stay tuned on that one. All right, with that, we'll leave it there. If you found this informative, give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe to support this channel and to be alerted of new videos, and we shall see you soon.